Today's modern world was built on strength, and in the 1800s, nothing was stronger than steel. The properties of this alloy were worthy of man's desire to scrape the sky, sail the seas, and ride the rails. It was this ability to mass produce that signaled the first revolution in materials science. During the 1900s, properties tended to give way to process as man looked for a more efficient, flexible way to mold the future. As the Second World War came to an end, the second materials revolution was underway with the discovery of thermoplastics. In the mid-90s, after more than 50 years of research, science had outdone itself, and the strength of a super alloy with the processability of plastics was ushering in the 21st century. Well, liquid metal is a glass, and in that respect, it's unlike any other conventional metal. Conventional metals crystallize when they solidify, they form crystals. Uh, liquid metal uh, is basically a frozen liquid, we call that a glass. Uh, in that respect, it's like the window pane, or like many plastics. It's a vitreous material. That makes it fundamentally different in processing. It makes it also fundamentally different in its mechanical properties. As seen in this diagram, conventional engineering metals such as steel and titanium have a crystalline atomic structure in which the atoms form a long-range pattern. The grain boundaries seen here, created by this structure, induce dislocation in the material. On the other hand, liquid metals have a random or amorphous structure, similar to the structure of all metals in a liquid state where atoms move freely. It is this unordered structure which delivers both the unique and desirable properties of liquid metal. In liquid metal, uh, there are no dislocations. The liquid structure has no crystal lattice. These dislocation defects don't exist and so the material can support much higher stress levels than corresponding crystals. And its strength, for example, then, is uh, typically two to three times stronger than the same material in the crystalline state. When it comes to performance advantages, liquid metal alloys are a hands-down favorite in the applications arena, where strength, elasticity, and hardness come into play. But does that mean steel and titanium have reached their manufacturing limits? Well, I think, you know, you never like to say that you've gone quite as far as you can go, but, but uh, the, the, you're coming to the point of kind of diminishing returns, so to speak. Advances can be made, are being made, uh, but, but the increments are, are, have to be getting smaller and smaller as, as one goes along. What's, what's special about these amorphous alloys is the, the whole paradigm is different. Uh, you don't start with a crystalline material and make it stronger. You start with a with a glass uh, and work work with those properties. Three, two, one, zero, and liftoff of Columbia with the Microgravity Science Laboratory. The liquid metal alloy's unique properties have already been part of four shuttle missions, including NASA's recent Genesis spacecraft launch to collect solar wind samples. These are unusual uh, materials, and they respond differently than ordinary crystalline metals and alloys that we've been, many of us have worked with for, for, for years. So the, the ability to, uh, to try to understand how this works and how to control things is a whole new, uh, new ballgame for us, you could, you could say. So it's exciting in that sense, N new things to understand. While the availability of steel has allowed scientists and engineers alike to generate and improve upon technologies around the globe, the advent of thermoplastics further expanded manufacturing as we know it. Now, liquid metal offers yet another opportunity. I think there is a, a parallel there between the, the potential growth of liquid metals and the well-known growth of thermoplastics in the 1950s and 60s. It combines uniquely a material with exceptional properties and an ability to process the material to exceptional shapes. Now, that's something that comes along only very rarely in material development. The last time it did was perhaps thermoplastics, which allowed the production of complex shapes by simple processing. Such techniques as that have never been available for processing metals. Now, suddenly we have them. We can do the same thing with liquid metals that we can do with thermoplastics. That manufacturing efficiency is achieved in molding plants, similar to plastics, not foundries as we know them. And like plastics, with the liquid metal alloy, you get parts to precise dimensions and without voids and defects at a reasonable cost. 
the whole aim of the, of the uh, movement toward net shape forming in recent years has been to either uh, uh, very much reduce or ideally to completely eliminate uh, subsequent uh, uh, finishing processes after the initial one, in this case a casting operation. And that is an important advantage of liquid metals. I was going to add that uh, uh, the high viscosity uh, and, the, and the fact that this material doesn't crystallize uh, means that the surface finish can be much smoother, much better, more consistent than, than with uh, for example, die castings or in a variety of other casting processes, also minimizing the need for any subsequent polishing or finishing. In other words, helping move us towards a, a, a net shape part uh, that is functional and attractive. The trend everywhere is to miniaturization, packing more functionality into a smaller volume, and that creates special needs for mechanical strength. You've got to have things which are small and yet very strong. Now that's where these materials excel. You can form them to the complex shapes you need. Uh, you can make them very thin. Uh, they have the strength that's required to contain complex electronics and displays um, whilst not taking up too much space. And that's exactly what uh, the area in which there's great demand. That's what you'd like. As a class of materials, liquid metal is a great deal stronger than the typical class of plastics, and an extremely high elastic strength limit sets liquid metal apart from the other metals. This simple experiment explains it best. Three tubes and three striking plates, steel, titanium, and our own liquid metal alloy. Three identical steel balls are dropped on each. Liquid metal alloy is a hands-down favorite. Liquid metal a metallic glass, has a very high elastic strain limit and accompanying very high strength. To put it simply, the high strain limit makes liquid metal the world's premier spring material. It's the best material we could possibly come up with to store and retrieve elastic energy in a mechanical device. A material which can efficiently store energy and give it back again up to very high strain a material which can store a very high density of elastic energy, becomes the premier material when that performance benchmark is critical. Any material which can efficiently store elastic energy up to very high densities is superior to other materials in that respect will be the premier material for those kinds of applications. The performance benchmark is equally critical for drill pipe manufacturing, where once again the chemistry of liquid metal wires and powders are used to provide a protective coating around the outside of the drill pipe and inside of casings to reduce wear and failure rate. Another area well suited for liquid metal is precision medical instruments and devices, including the bearing surfaces for hip joints, where implant longevity is critical. The advantage to using liquid metal Three things come to mind, uh, uh, of course high strength, very, very high, high, high strength and the ability to maintain an edge. Uh, these are relatively corrosion resistant materials too, uh, so that's, that's uh, a point of durability. And then again, the, the ability to be able to process these things, form them, uh, shape them into intricate shapes easily. You don't have complex machining operations, you have complex finishing operations. You can, these, these materials can be cast to shape where the final shape and the final surface is as you would want it without machining and without a lot of finishing. As the materials timeline continues its travels through the 21st century, liquid metal provides the strength of a super alloy and the processability of plastics to a global economy where the terms cutting edge and the best are synonymous with innovation and success. The fact that you can cast these things to shape uh, and have the right, have the, essentially the final finish with very little finishing operations uh, in the final part of the processing. That's, that's, that's the big thing, I think, that's being brought to manufacturers of products. Within 10 years or, or, or less, I would expect this to have a significant uh, uh, portion of the uh, net shape market in at least important niche areas. And I'm uh, delighted to be part of the team as we move forward. We believe that a combination of alloy development and processing technology will open the spectrum of materials that we can process this way to a much broader array in the future. And that, that will only open up new areas of potential application. 
I would guess that everything from hearing aids to handheld computers are going to be made of this stuff quite soon. Mm -hmm.